Hello everyone, Hyrcaria here bringing you a 3v3 cast. This is a game that I've personally played in, spawning on the bottom corner, the bottom right side of the map. We have our orange Protoss player, Kijisui. We have our yellow Protoss player, Azrael. And we have me, the purple Zerg. Now these two are my friends from from real life, so we're just playing some threes because we feel like it. And spawn, spawning on the top left corner we have the enemy, our red Protoss player with a name I can't pronounce, our blue Protoss player Shadow, and our teal Protoss player Michael. Uh, this is one of the newer maps, I, haven't, I don't really know it. I actually haven't played in a really long time, so I'm really bad at this game now. I haven't played it. Actually, I'm still not done uploading my games from 4 months ago. So what you're seeing, my 1v1s right now, are played 4 months ago in, at the end of 2012. That's when I actually knew how to play this game. Now I'm reduced to playing the campaign and failing the campaign, so... Yeah. Following a long way. So... I just noticed that I'm the only Zerg in the middle of all of this Protoss, you know, the nice clean Protoss with their shiny buildings, whereas I'm spreading this purple crap everywhere. So I, I'm going to make it my goal in this game to ruin the, the terrain by spreading this purple crap everywhere. And apparently we are getting cannon rushed right away by the red player with name I can't pronounce, starting with a forge and pulling off this cheesy garbage garbage I told him to pull three workers, four workers is enough to kill I believe three workers is enough to bring it down enough that it won't do any damage if the cannons go up I don't know why he pulled this many, it's kind of overkill and apparently our red player isn't quitting with it I think so that's, so that's a probe in here I am deciding to take an expansion myself because I don't want to deal with this garbage. And yes, the Reptar still isn't done with this garbage yet, so he's going to keep on trying to plant down pylons. And I am paying my ally to tell him that there's a pylon in his base, and apparently he's pulling a lot of probes again. I think in a certain way this has already paid for itself, just by how much mining time is, is delaying. I love this point mining time doesn't really matter. It's just at the beginning. If you if you're slow then At least for a while you're gonna be slow. So finally some probe died, I think it's a red player. I myself, I'm getting an early evolution chamber because I'm a total noob at this game. And some of this some of the stuff I say is actually true. I am actually bad at this, but that's not the reason why I got the evil chamber down. So why the reason why I get the evil chamber down is gonna be probably Clear soon so apparently this guy's trying to cannon rush me now. You don't ever cannon rush a Zerg. First of all, there's queens around. Second of all, this purple shit is gonna make it impossible to build your cannons. Well, the cannons in any spot that will hit anything. So I don't really pull out my workers. I just pull enough to build the cannons and the garbage. The so Lings will try and clean up the probe. The probe dies. And apparently there is a probe in here belonging to Azrael. Azrael, my mentor, of course, in the world of Skyrim. So, getting my missile attack level 1 really early. You can see back in our base. He just we, is opting to go for a robotics path. We are running Wings of Liberty because, well, if you want to play a serious game, you really should play Wings of Liberty. Because Heart of the Swarm has a lot of uh, overpowered garbage. 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 So, I guess both of them are opting to go for a robotics path. In the base of the enemy, we have a really weird cannon build from Michael. And three gates. We have double forge upgrades with two gateways. No warp gates at seven minutes in. Although that's really not that 
weird, but the double forge is really weird. Double forge is only zealots and no stalkers from shadow. And cannon rusher red is building cannons. What a big surprise! Cannon rushers. Once a cannon rusher, always makes cannons. What's next? Now you know one of the one of these games I went into the Shadow Temple because Shadow Temple was the map. One of the maps for the free version. I like Shadow Temple better than Discord because Discord you have shared bases and it's really annoying to break one of the little noobs when both of them clump up. So I was playing on Shadow Temple. Then this new Protoss tried to play me. I forgot what his name was. I just saw him and I thought to myself, this guy's a noob. He's going to well. I didn't really knew he was a noob. I just saw a gateway and a forge go down, which is really stupid. I don't know a valid opening with gateway forge down at the same time. So I thought to myself, this is a noob. He's going to start up with a cannon rush, and then he's going to transition into mass void rays, and then he's going to bring a DT in my base. And after a while, there was the yeah, cannons in my base, which I easily stopped. And then I saw the five void rays in his base and I wiped it out before DTs came. So yeah, that's kind of one thing that noobs Protoss do. But we are anything but noobs. We actually know proper build orders, but we don't do them because well, you know, anything other than 1v1s can't really be taken seriously. So you basically just screw around. You can tell by the number of queens. I can see the Robo Bay coming down for Azrael. He's a big fan of the Colossus builds. He also likes the Tempest a lot. He says that he would be, be content on playing Wings of Liberty if he only had uh, if the Tempest was in his only add-on that it's really good. But yeah, Tempests are cool. What the Tempest really need is the smart siege tank AI. I really don't need this garbage where the Tempests all focus down on one Zergling. I mean, siege tanks have to start AI to don't waste DPS. Why can't we have Tempest do the same? Unit composition for our opponents. We have zealots and stalkers, uh, both players. What's really funny is that the Terran theme is playing when there's not a single Terran in this game. The random cannon is placed over here, and we do have Twilight Council here, possibly for the rush to DT, and we have Stargates for. What I like to call the noob race, because you just freaking. I guess every freaking noob just makes waiters. And with the new prismatic alignment, just no. Now you have. The prismatic alignment basically turns every PvP into a noob game, because in wings only the noobs would make void rays, and. well, in any great number. And only void rays. Now in PvP, you don't make void rays, you lose. So basically, Blizzard has turned Heart of the Swarm PvP into a new fest. With Prismatic Alignment. Because Alignment basically melts everything, except Phoenix. Anyways, I'm doing a good job covering the whole map in Creep, because my queens can't really move without that stuff. I know I can upgrade Overlord speed, I seem to have forgotten in this game. And then I was too busy spreading Creep to actually upgrade it. But really, you don't really need that. You got a giant field of creep, so we can move our queens around. This map is actually pretty huge. I think this map has a lot of potential for good games. And the rush distance is huge. You can see how big this map actually is. So it promotes long macro games, which is always nice to watch. And we do have some Colossus coming out of Azrael. And for Keija Sui, we have random expansion on the opponent's side of the expansion. Apparently we're really big on expanding and we do have the blue player and the teal player moving out. There's something hitting. We have hallucinated phoenix being sent everywhere to scout by Kijisui. And our red player is continuing to mass massive void rays. Well, we already have the cannon rush and now we have the void rays. And we already have the Twilight Council for the DTs. I don't think I've seen any DTs in this game when I actually played it. Well, I was focusing mostly on my army, so I couldn't really... Well, I just didn't care enough to watch the other armies. 
Here's my army of queens with plus two, plus two. Our upgrades for our opponents looks like one weapons. Two weapons. Nobody has any armor. And our Void Ray Master has one shield. Why would you upgrade shields? This player must be pretty... Let's think it's pretty weird how there's creep over here so close to his base. But yeah. We don't have a lot of creep coming up. And over here my queens kind of got split up. But this is where the battle starts. Losses nothing so far, and Red Crowdog is actually losing quite a bit. I am not going to take on all this garbage, so I pulled back and I lost a few queens, but that's not really a big deal. I am using transfers to keep my units alive. Our orange player Kijasui is trying to back me up as much as he can. Beating stalkers, immortals, beating stalkers, and immortals, while I can take care of the bugs. Our Void Ray player probably hit life right now. Queens, if there's anything they're good at, it's killing void rays. Their anti air is the same as Hypus, I believe. And our blue player is holding in, and there's just a lot of zealots, and that's gonna push back our stalker. Charge is done for our blue player. His upgrades look like plus two and nothing. And up to the running plus two over here, and the battle is pushing us back to our main base where the Zealous apparently wants to keep on wanting to aggro on my queen. This Colossus is just hit, hitting life right now. It's a bad rally point, forcing her to go through all this units. Zealous is running into queens again, over and over again. Void Ray is getting taken out by queen. It's kind of stupid of me not to strike creep close to our base. I was just trying to push up the top, which makes my queens really too slow. But right now, you can see that was a kind of a waste of transfer there. Queens are cleaning up the stalkers, but the Colossus has the verbal army on the bottom. And apparently he just raises the Colossi. What's M move? Oh, move. I think it's just... It, it, it's the not A click. But our opponents did fall back for now, and Mew's last tab shows that the big winner is Azrael. I do have a lot of bases for myself. Creep is covering most of the space. Creep is covering a quarter of the map. And our blue player did decide to move out apparently. Let's check, take a look at the units count. We have a lot of workers. Apparently I'm winning the worker wars. But Zerg really should be winning the worker wars. We have five void rays, some zealots and stalkers. Apparently they lost almost everything in that last battle. Over here we do have a bunch of units. I guess he is just playing the big troll of the game. He's trying to out troll me in this game. Because apparently we decided this was the last of our games we're gonna play today. Because I had to go for dinner. So we basically decided that we're gonna troll this game. Either that or he decided to troll after he saw the number of queens I was making. You can see how many hatcheries I have. You can see my hockey is down here. I have 17 hatcheries making queens, although some are just being built right now. Upgrades are done. Queens are maxed, uh, max upgrades 3 3. Upgrades for our opponents Void Rays have plus 1 weapons and shields. Our blue player has plus 3 weapons and no armor. And our teal player has plus 1 weapons and 1 armor. I guess against this army, uh, my queens would melt fastest to the blue player, but that doesn't really matter because the blue player only has stalkers, which doesn't really hurt the queens a lot. The red player is trying to move in and take out some queens. He failed to kill a single one, and that void already got taken out in the last minute. Transfuse is healing up the queen that got damaged. A lot of random darts being thrown at the rock. These are just flying in every single direction. He's trying to take down my queens again. He darts in the base, losing a void ray again. Apparently, shield player found himself in the box. My queens are destroying basically everything right now. Transfuse is keeping alive most of my queens. Meanwhile, my allies are just doing their thing and taking over the whole map, which is really nice. It's always fun to rub it the opponent's face in the fact that we took over the whole map while beating a map. Now blue pair with his plus 3 attack comes in and slaughters all my queens. A 
all the void rays go down. And apparently it, the blue player was trying to focus down this one queen, so all I had to do is spam the T and keep that one queen alive. So apparently that queen falls. And now he's left with only stalkers, which is bad against queens. Red player apparently not very pleased about the number of queens on the map. And now our orange player keeps just sweet. Is pushing with his Colossus down the cannon rusher's door. door. And our yellow player joins in with a billion more Colossus. My queens are pushing their own way up. And since I don't have Overlord to strike creep, I have to push down the creep tumor myself. It's very rare that you see queens attacking a hatchery. I mean, uh, an exit. Void Ray still trying to steal any damage to these queens, so Void Ray's just don't really do any damage. My uh, void rays have one weapon, and queens have three armor. Four armor, apparently. We have one native armor. And these do seven damage. So creep is expanding into our opponent's base. There's Colossus here owning everything. And players are beginning to leave. Can't really play them getting owned by mass by mass Colossus. I mean Colossus is pretty standard, I guess. Let's go back to the queens. I like them. So yeah, it's a pretty one-sided game, but it's still funny because of a massive amount of hallucinated phoenix, colossus, queens, taking over the opponent's expansions, the massive number of cannons, and everything else. So, it's very rarely that I show a 3v3, but I decided to show this one anyways because, well, you can't really get enough of mass queens.